Well, welcome, uh, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is Window Treatments. We've got you covered. My name is Brian Deerwachter, and I'll introduce our speaker in a moment. Linda has been 20, 30 years, you said? 30 years. 30 years of experience. Um, she's got a lot of good information for you, so uh, I'm just going to turn it over to you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming on such a beautiful night. Um, we should all move that outside, all this outside, but... For now, we'll just be in here and I won't hopefully make it too long for you. I've left some information on um, my company and also on some products and my name and number and email. So if you have any questions that we don't get to, um, feel free to email me, call me, and we'll probably kind of try to hold the questions until after just to kind of keep things, keep things rolling. But again, my name's Linda Batterson, and I've had blind attraction for about 20 years. Before that, my grandfather was in the business, so it's kind of in the blood. I grew up around window coverings, and kind of literally grew up around window coverings. Since we were a family of window coverings, we had the whole layer, the room darkening shade, the sheer, the drapery, the valance, so we had all the layers. So I uh, grew up in that world, and my Grandfather had the business, and then my dad had the business. Um, when I was about 13 years old, I used to go and make the roller wood window shades that my grandfather made in his basement in the 30s. We had a shop set up down on 34th and, and Cedar, and I was 13 and did a whole bunch of uh, window shade production. Um, your good old-fashioned ones that would flip up if you let it go too fast. and. So we had a lot of repairs. We had a lot of new product. There was Minneapolis was growing, so we did a lot of the housing redevelopment for Minneapolis, and so we were turning out shades constantly. So as I grew up, um, like I said, it was in, in, my, in my blood, and then in my early 20s, my dad asked me to come on board full time, so I worked for him for 10 years about, off and on, because towards the end of my tenure, I had three daughters, and my first daughter came along, and 22 months later, I had twin girls. So I had three under the age of two, and uh, life was a little crazy. But I was still working with him. He had to, of course, get some help as I was at home taking care of three little ones. And it kind of morphed into that he was doing a lot of commercial and kind of funneled me, the residential. And business-wise, it was easier if I just started blind attraction and worked out of my house. Easier for my family, easier for my kids. I could be home and it worked out well. The business just grew and I just fell in love with doing window coverings. So um, to start off, you heard a little bit about me. Um, we have an array of window coverings that I could go through on and on. Um, we can go to the next one if you got the next slide there. Just some pictures. There's just a whole litany nowadays of different options out there. And what I thought tonight to just try and kind of focus and keep our time in, in under an hour or so, that I would look at the fact that housing redevelopment is wanting to energy efficient homes and help insulate homes. So we'll kind of focus on the area of some products that are better at doing that. And so I've got three different categories, I should say, for that. But we do work with blinds, drapes, shades. We'll do shutters, anything interior-wise. We'll do, we'll do cornices and valance. Um, but anything, just about anything you can think of for interior window coverings, we will do. So to get kind of started, of course, we all like a comfortable home. And I thought I'd kind of focus on the two extremes, winter and summer. Winter, we like to, you know, kind of cut that heat loss that goes out of the window. And in summer, we like to control that solar heat gain that comes in the window. So just like the little puppy dog, we like to wrap ourselves in a blanket or else find shade, shade, shade in trees and make our house a little bit more shade oriented. Three ways to save with window coverings. Insulation is, is one key factor. Also solar heat control and what we call daylighting. So your insulation factor is kind of like your blanket coming in front of that window and it'll re reduce the cold air coming in through that glass. The solar heat control will be the, the solar heat that comes from the sunlight. When you have an open window, everything gets warm. 
And so it retains that heat. And if we kind of diffuse that or control that, that'll be less heat into the home. With the daylighting, it's, if you think about, um, well, let's take verticals. People know verticals. So when you tilt those veins or horizontal blinds, sunlight will reflect. And you can kind of reflect some of that heat out and you can reflect some of the light coming into the room, further into the room, therefore not having to turn on maybe overhead lights and keeping your energy costs down. Then we can go into the next one, which is um, the next slide, which is uh, the ultraviolet protection. Everybody knows that sunlight fades everything, but also it just it creates that, that heat. So when light is transferring through the window and heat is being gained, the fabrics tend to fade. And also with sound absor absorption, um, in the aspect of maybe you're talking and having conversation and echoing in the room, window coverings can help defer that too. It not only defers in that direction, but also with any noises coming inside the home. Maybe there's a busy street or you live downtown. It's nice to kind of defer some of that sound absorption and have the window coverings control that too. So as I said, we have a lot of products. Um, we're kind of, I'm gonna grab some water here, sorry. Um, we're gonna kind of focus on comfort techs just because as you can see, these are only a few. So we have everything from shutters to blinds to shades to drapery to fabric. Um, Kirsch has been around, that's a familiar name. So is Hunter Douglas. Uh, some of these other companies, Helzer does a lot of great hardware, a lot of, a lot of great um, hardware for the drapery. Timber blinds, uh, Norman also, they and Comfortex, Draper do a lot of the shades. Draper does a lot of work with some of your big screens, even bigger than this one, and some of the big school uh, <coughs> partitions in their, in their gymnasiums. So these are just a select few, but I think what I decided to do was kind of con concentrate on Comfortex for a couple reasons. One is, my favorite, is they have great customer service. So if I need anything, um, let's say if something in shipping got damaged, they're really on top of it. I love that. The other one is the fact that prices have kind of gone up through these years, and some of them, some companies have just kind of gone with that. And a lot of my clientele is looking for something a little bit more uh, cost effective. So Comfortex is, to be honest, under the, uh, the un under the Hunter Douglas umbrella, kind of like the Parasol restaurants have different restaurants. Comfortex is under them now. I've worked with them for about 12 years. They're completely run separately. They have an array of different fabrics and all sorts of options without having the higher priced fabrics and it's a little bit more reasonable. So we'll go on to our next screen. As I talked about in the beginning with uh, diffusing of light, a couple products that Comfortex has, and so, Comfortex has, and so do other people or other companies, are shear shades. And you got to bear with me on hand samples because they're not in the window and solid, and it's my arm that I'm trying to hold this up and do this. It's a little awkward, but this is a shear shade, and it's a it's a shade because it comes straight down. It rolls up come straight down, and then once you get it down below, it turns into a blind. It turns into a horizontal. The shear on the front and the back will act as a nice diffusing for light. It also helps with it. Anything will help in your window for energy efficiency. It's just some things will help better. This one will trap some air in between, kind of an insulating factor, and diffuse the light into the room. And you can turn these slats up a little or down, and Comfortex has a little added feature, I kind of did it before. It'll go up in this position, which a lot of products don't. If you go back down, then it'll go and roll itself up. They all have the cassette, which is this, and then your fabric on the front, so everything coordinates and ties together. 
with all of our products, they come with remote control also, but a uh, couple of the shades come with a cordless touch. It's a wand that's actually on the shade, kind of like your um, horizontal blinds that had the wand. But in there is a power control, so you can actually go up to the window. It's really easy because it's up or down, open or closed. And so it's nice for if there's a window over a sink and just to reach it. Um, I have an example of one that I'll show later, and they've upgraded it since my, since my hand sample to where you can even touch it in a, in, and walk away, and it'll go up and stop by itself, and you touch it and walk away, and it'll come back down by itself. So they've come up with all of these options that are just remarkable and handy to have. There is also the remote control, and I can get into some more of that as we go along. So some of these show the manual operated, some show, whoops, some show the um, cord operated, which is the continuous cord, and some pictures will show that we have remoted option or motorized option. So this is all, this has all been Shangri-La, and if we go to the next screen, I think we have, yes, we have the overtones. This is something new, and again, I had this all the way down because being a hand sample, it gets thrown around in my car, and it kind of moves, and unfortunately, the fabric, yours won't, wouldn't do this, but the fabric has caught, so I have to play with it sometimes. I think window coverings are made to be in your home, not in my car, thrown around. So this one is a lot like the, um, the, sh the Shangri-La. This is the overtones. So it comes down, and it'll be like a shade. It's a little bit more updated. It's a little bit more modern for some various rooms. And it shifts. There's the two sides. And it shifts so that the veins will open, and you can get some view through it. And then it will also go all the way up into the headrail. Like I said, I wish I, had, I, wish I was stronger. I had 10, 10 arms sometimes. That would help. So you can see that it diffuses the light again. It'll, it'll help with some of that energy savings. It gets the air in between the two fabrics, so it kind of creates some insulation. And they, will, they have motorized and they have the, the cord option control. So you're able to diffuse the light and also get into a privacy situation. Brian! Do any of those have the top-down feature, or are those all? These are all not. not. No, but we'll get to some that do. And like I said, we have other products out there that I haven't. If I brought everything in, I'd need a semi. Um, so uh, there are other products that do top down, bottom up. Along with the shears, there's a vertical option too, just like your vertical blind. And it has veins. I wish I could bring one of those in, but I'd have to have really tall arms. Um, it has veins just like your vertical, and then it has that sheer fabric going across front and back. So you can tilt the veins and you can pull it back just like your verticals that I think everybody knows of. It coordinates well with any of the sheer horizontals, so the overtones or the horizontal blind. And that's, that one is, here's a couple other options. The other nice feature of the vertical, it's for wide spans. Even a window like that, we could do a vertical in. So that's another nice feature of the vertical. And of course, it matches your doors. Any of your sliding doors go to the side or might pair off, and we can do the same with the vertical shears. So Envision sh screen shades are just what they say. They're screen shades. You may have seen the first screen shades come out. There's some on the windows right here. But a lot of times it was first featured in coffee houses where they wanted to be able to see outside and yet have some of that sun control and heat control. Because if anyone sitting by the window, it would be hot. And if you go sit at one of those coffee houses, you can tell what a difference that makes. And yet, it doesn't close off the room. So the, sheer, the Envision shades, the screen shades, came into play in all dark, pretty dark colors at first. And they have great UV ratings. They have a 90 to 99% cutting that UV light that comes in. Depending on their weave, and there's different weaves. There's some with pattern. 
um, different weave, I should say, densities. And it goes anywhere from 3%, 5% to 10%. And each one of those has different variables to it, which if you needed to know anything in specific, we have that information. There's just so many fabrics out that um, be too much information to bring to you tonight. But this is nice because it does block that light and cut that UV ray that comes in, the fading rays, and it diffuses the light too in the room. They are also remotely operated and with the, the cord, the continuous cord on this one. All of them, well I should say some of them come with head rails. Most everybody does get a head rail so that it all coordinates and that you don't see the hardware inside. It's kind of a nice feature. There are the screen shades now that we make for porches, which is nice. Back in the day, we only had the wood porch shades that rolled up from the bottom, were really big and clunky. But now they'll make them, and we can put them out on porches. Just remember to put them up if the wind blows, because you don't want that blowing back and forth. But they work great because they cut the light, a little more enjoyable to sit out there. If, if you had direct light, it gets a little hot. Um, they also give a nice view. If you can tell the difference between the glare when you look out and then the diffused light. So it's kind of like putting on sunglasses. Some of the screen shades come in lighter fabrics now because everybody was asking for them. Various colors and various textures. I have, again, if anyone wants to look at anything in the end, sample books over here. This one is updated so that you don't get that shade flying up and out of the brackets. It's um, a nice, easy, cordless option, and you can just let it, let it go up. Pretty simple head rail if you wanted just to do this or hardware, and it can mount like this or from the top. And some places or some people decide, oh, that's pretty simple for me. I like that streamlined look. So they'll just do that and not put the cover or the cassette over it. So again, I just wanted to show a couple things here, again, the glare in the room. It's nice when you pull those shades so you don't get the glare with the screen shade. This one has a silver screen backing, which I have one here. Because like I said, initially they were dark colors. So a lot of those fabrics would absorb some of that. You know, with the dark, it'd get hot or get warm. And people were wanting to defer that energy a little bit, so they put some silver backing on it. So you would see that from the outside, but again, from the front, it would look whatever color choice that you would want. So that's a nice option to have. Gives a little bit more of an energy efficiency to have that silver on the back. Um, some of the head rails now, when they've gotten to smaller shades, it will be a little more streamlined. That's a nice feature. And then two, I really wish I was stronger. I've lost my strength over these years. Not like when I first started in my 20s. Um, all the brackets for the covers can be mounted. You can mount up or you can mount back to the wall. So all the brackets are now hidden. It used to be that you had a bracket on each side and you would see that. And then you decide, okay, do I need to cover it with a valance or something to cover that up? So the shades nowadays have gotten just to a nice streamlined look. All right, on to the next one. Oh, I forgot I put these in here. So with those Envision shades, or the screen shades, some of the businesses put them in their windows, and we found out that because of dark fabrics, which they'd kind of decide to use since splashing or coffee on a shade would, would not be good. From the outside, it looked like the business was closed because it was dark. So some business have opted to put either like their name across it so that they, or say, yes, we're open. And we started to, on the screen shades, put graphics. And in this case, the studio, art studio, decided to put a picture on it to make it look nice. We can also do custom graphics on the interior. So this one opted to put some color into their room. You can still see, it's kind of hard to see in this one, but you can still see out 
they took an angle shot on this one, but you could still see out like any of the screen shades. It's just that they're more colorful from the outside. They were either a silver screen or they might be the, the dark color. So we can do a lot of fun things with the Envision screen shades. For the next one. Here are the roller shades and light filtering, because we still have those. And the room darkening, also, that we have. Custom graphics, you can do something for your office. If you had a small little area and just wanted to put a design on the shade, um, something a little fun. Kids' rooms are a popular one to put a des design in there. Some maybe rec rooms or some fun sports memorabilia. You can even take a photograph and they can do the image on the shade. Lots of options. And two for those sliding glass doors. We have the Envision panel track. So we can take any of the fabrics that coordinate with the shades and utilize it for the panel tracks. The panels come in various widths. It would be kind of what you, what you would prefer. And they just slide back and stack on each other. So it's a different option than the vertical, a different option to do that still coordinates everything. Pretty streamlined on the head rail. That is very nice. Some people do utilize shades on patio doors, but the tough thing is if they're not that tall and there's tall people, then you have to, you kind of have that shade overhead. So these are a nice option. Back here. Oh, sorry. How do they slide back and forth this time? So this is, um, you can either have a wand control, like in a, like you would see draperies in a hotel. So you have a, a wand control in the front that you can pull, or it is a continuous cord on the side, which I tend to be honest, prefer just because I feel like those panels will stack better on each other. That wand control puts a lead on it, and so I don't feel like it stays back as nicely. So just a little hint from my own personal. I'd prefer the, the kind of the drapery cord on the side. It works a little better. But those are so nice. You can vary those panels. Like I said, this option, they chose to do four across here. You could do five. Um, same with the others. So there's some choices that you can make in there, and that works nice. Yep. Split, no. okay. Yep. So you can split it just like a drapery if you needed to, um, or you can just go from one side to the other. So along with the um, screen shades, they do some of the screen fabrics in the, this isn't the greatest because it's not the tallest or the longest shade, but, and this one doesn't show a screen. I'm trying to think of, no, I don't have one. So, but they can do them in a Roman shade. So if you don't like a roller shade and you wanted something, you know, a little bit more traditional, you can do so, these fabrics in the screen shade and in a Roman shade. One of the nice features there, again, is one that goes up on the roller, just by itself on the roller. As I said, this one's not very long, so I have a little bit of trouble showing you on that one but it does go up by itself and it doesn't snap, snap up. There's different fabrics. This one happens to be a light filtering fabric. They also have the Roman shades on the continuous cord and we do have also motorized. So remote control. And by the way, all mine are rigged with this little thing just because otherwise I'd have to hold this down. These are all child safety and they need to be mounted in order for it to work. But I've just kind of rigged mine. You won't have yours like that. So this one's pretty streamlined. We've seen some of the younger generation want just a simple head rail. You can get a valance that covers this. It clips on. It looks a lot like it is the fabric. And it's a valance that covers that head rail to kind of finish it off. So another nice option. Okay, now we're going to get into kind of the blankets. Does anyone remember um, it was called window quilt and it looked like a quilt and it was on, you could put it on your window. It was amazing because it looked like a quilt and it rolled up and then also had magnets on the side and you would adhere magnets to your trim work and that would come down and it would just 
kind of glue to that window. This is what the updated version of window quilts is. Because the window quilt was actually a quilt, it did great on energy efficiency, sometimes too great that your windows would get wet because of the condensation and then mold. So they came up with the honeycomb shade, which I'm sure that you've seen. Um, the cell shade, cellular shade has honeycomb. And so in here, the air is trapped, creating an in insulating factor. You can do room darkening, which even makes it more insulating, great for bedrooms. But this, this is amazing. When you put this on a window, you can just feel the difference right away. If you, the sun was coming through, and it stacks up so nicely. So when your window's open, it's open. So this is my version, new updated version of that window quilt. I always think of it. Always white on the back so that you see the street side is white and you don't see one red window if you had different colors in your room from the street side. Different, all sorts of different fabrics. I have the book over there. And of course your cordless is great if you can reach your window. They come in corded too with the continuous cord, so we have that option. They have remote control. And this one is where we get into what Brian was talking about. This happens to be a room darkening shade. So it's a little bit thicker. And this is the top down, bottom up, which is one of my favorite, because you get a little versatility. Tall windows, the sun's coming in on the bottom. You can bring this all the way down to the bottom, and it's protecting your carpeting or your your items in the room, and yet you have some view out the top. There's magnets on the top, so it gets a nice tight fit for when, you're, when it's room darkening. And then it's just so easy to operate. Continuous cord for both. If you had top down and bottom up with continuous cord, you have a cord on each side. One controls the bottom and one controls the top. So for any tall windows, that works great as an option. And these you can get remote control also. This one also has, I'll get to that, has that touch, has the touch wand. They're coming out with more of the products having that as we go along, but that was introduced pretty new. Again, we can do custom graphics on them. Um, something just, you know, in a, in a kitchen that you needed some little, you know, fun added to the kitchen. Or I like this one in the living room and they've added some custom graphics on the bottom. Again, top down, bottom up on that one. And this one, this cell shade and actually the roller shade, you had asked that question about a side track. So on this picture, it shows a side track going along your window and the shade is notched on the side so that track fits in there. It's almost like a T and then it wraps around too. So you can have a really nice tight fit and get rid of some of those light gaps on the side. Um, also, it gives a little bit better insulating when you have that track on the side. I would just caution, again, this can get so tight, just like that window quilt that I talked about, that you'll want to, every day, let your window breathe and have this up. If it's left down, there's just condensation and nowadays in homes when so tightly fitted and have great insulation. Con con the condensation will freeze in the winter and then thaw, and then you'll have some problems there. So just a note on being careful there. If you did just the room darkening and we did an inside mount, the gaps are so small, and this comes up to the side of your window, that really you need to turn lights on because it, it is dark in there. So generally, this by itself works just fine for room darkening. There's a photo of a, oops, sorry photo of a light fabric up here, room, really room darkening down here with the side track. You can see how dark it gets with the lights on. I wish we could turn this light off, but we, we, we can't. You might see that a little bit better. Okay. So a new product out there is, uh-oh, did I leave that one in my car? I might have left that one in my car. I did. So this one I left, sorry, I apologize, in my car. But this one had the remote touch. So that wand comes down on the side, the example that I had. And you just push, that, push the wand, the shade comes down. 
when it gets to the bottom, you're able to open the shade and it becomes actually a horizontal blind. So it's a cellular blind odyssey, it's horizontal, it's kind of everything all in one. If you go to the next shade, or next. So on the left is the, it in the horizontal position. I'm just gonna point here. And as well as here, and here it's the cellular shade, so it's all the way closed. So it's another option of kind of some versatility in there. You're diffusing the light in the horizontal position and it's becoming a cellular shade for insulation in the closed position. Really nice feature. And again, the sliding glass doors. So lots of homes have windows and they have the sliding glass door. So we always have a product that kind of matches and this cellular blind basically works this way. There's a track on the top that this all is attached to on the top and you can just pull it along left or right for whatever matches your door or a pair, just like a drapery, or you could even have where this is not stationary on this side and this whole panel is floating left and right. So if you had a room that sometimes you get sun over there in the corner and you want to block that, you could pull the whole panel to the one side or you could pull the whole panel to the other side. Really nice for some drafty um, basement doors. If they're sliding glass doors and they're older, we've utilized this a lot in the basement and people are just amazed at, at how energy efficient they are and they make a difference. So again, we're showing the ovation on the slider and the cellular shade in the window and then a pair of uh, the Ovation slider on that one. And then we get into arches. Before I get into this, I just wanted to show this one. This is a new one. So this linen fabric in the Comfortex line, it's just a really nice linen look, and it became really popular. Um, so popular that they decided to put out a whole Color Lux book, which has all sorts of colors some being here's this year's kind of popular color some of the grays this above is the light filtering so light will filter through it and this down below is the room darkening so you get kind of an idea there's a little bit of color change in the colors from light filtering to room darkening just because it does have that room darkening back um, the other feature that was really popular is on an outside mount. Sometimes you would see, let me get to that, on, on an outside mount you'd see on the room darkening, the silver that they were using for a lining for many years. And so a lot of people didn't like to see that. If this was just on a door, then you're like, oh, I see the silver in here from the side. So they came out with, on the room darkening, where this one has a white, so you don't see any silver. And another nice feature is sometimes the fabrics that were on the front were the same as the back. They're a little more papery, and on the front of this one, it's that linen, so it becomes really soft. You guys can pass this around, because it could become so much softer in look than that papery um, silver lining. And with the color looks in that fabric, you can do all sorts of colors. We can take a color that maybe you have on your wall, which a lot of people would say, I want that color on my wall. And we can take it and coordinate it, either they have it exactly, or we can coordinate it in, our con in the computer with one of the colors. So there's, I think there's 800 colors in here that we can make those shades in. They also have just recently come out it's a lot like this shade, but it is in that same linen fabric. Um, so they take that fabric and do it flat in a regular shade, a lot like this. And again, we can do 800 colors. So nice for coordinating. So then onto kind of the finish line here with um, specialty shades. A lot of times, and for so many years, we had trouble with 
half circle windows or quarter circle windows. And now there's a company out there called Adjust-A-View and you can look them up online. And they've come up with this fabulous, as a designer, fabulous product. And it's um, taking your cellular shades, so any of those materials, I should say most of those materials, and they've, because they're still getting kind of patented or getting to be able to use some of the materials out there, and they're utilizing it for these big arch windows. This client of mine had this arch window and it faces west. And this is her living room. I'm actually up taking this photo up on the loft to the kitchen, but this is the living room. And they were getting so much sun in there, especially during the summer, that it would, it would kick on their air conditioner. And yet, it was too hot to not have the air conditioner on. So there was this constant struggle. So she found me online and saw this adjust view product. And so we did, on the bottom, we did the uh, Comfortex honeycomb, and then they could take the same material, Comfortex, this adjust view and do this shade. And they were just amazed. They saved money that first year in air conditioning costs to take care of doing these window coverings. Um, how this works is a lot, it's a big fan, because the two arms come up like this, and they come together and then fan down. If you look at this photo, you can see that it sits, but it sits nice and tucked at the bottom, just above that, that hardware there. So it sits nice and flat, and then the two leads come up and meet halfway. There's a cord on each side, a continuous cord, and she chose, she just, they were white, and they pretty much matched the trim of her window, but she chose to put draper panels on each side to kind of cover that cord. So behind on each side, one does the right, one does the left. They come up to meet, and it solved the problem. I mean, they were just amazed. The other thing is the half arch, there's a house across the street, and the half arch could see right into their kitchen, because their kitchen was lofted towards the back, and so it became a nice privacy thing too. So in case they went to the kitchen to get coffee in their robe, they didn't have to be seen by the neighbors. So they were just, that was one of my more fun, fun projects because it was the first time that I did a Just A View. And here is a client that I just did, I think it was last year, and they had a sun issue coming in. Wherever they positioned their TV in the room, the sun would change during the year and they just had a problem with seeing the TV all the time. So again, they did the adjust a view. They already had their valance, they already had their wood blind. So I ended up here just doing the adjust a view uh, cell blind above. And as you can see, they completely put up one side and they were just kind of showing that the other one goes up. And they can regulate how much they want to cover. So it's a great product for those. They have to be perfect half circles or quarter circles. And we've got the dimensions there. Just for an example, the width on the bottom needs, the, the height in the top, the center top, needs to be half or within two, ha two inches of half the width of the bottom. That creates a perfect, and so they're able to do that. There is a track that follows up above. Another nice feature, because you might have seen some cell shades out there that are actually cut, so they come up vertically just like your sh shade would. Pretend I had this but pretend this wasn't here on the top, and we cut it to match either a half circle or maybe an eyebrow. The issue there is there wasn't a track system that they had in place. So when that cut fabric came up to meet the window, it sometimes does not follow a nice straight arc. In this case, they actually make a track that follows that window. So you'll see, you see their woodwork there and then this thin track that the shade goes into, and so therefore it covers, kind of when it goes across, there's a track there and it covers those, any discrepancy on the window. Specialty shapes can be troublesome, but shutters are always an option. Shutters can be made to fit any window, and they're so custom done that it just becomes furniture in your home. Um, popular are the big plantation shutters, and up above, these were some of those eyebrow arched windows, and they were able to fit and coordinate the shutter there.
also get some triangles or different shapes can be problemsome for shades. Usually you only had a shade that went horizontally across and we couldn't do anything above with the triangle. But with shutters we can just we can do just about anything. This is actually these are actual panels that open almost like your um, panel doors and they'll open to the side and you can see up above we kind of arched it on the on the end there. And that's it. That's all I have. So hopefully you've learned some things about energy efficiency. If you have questions or if you want to see other products, I'll be here for a little while. And if you want to take a look at any of the books, um, we can certainly do that too. Does anyone have any questions? I do. Yay. There is, you're right. Thanks for bringing that up. We do. So there is a power uh, motorized option for the arch window. Again, it works separately. Each side will work. You can program the remote so that they both come up at the same time. And there is a video on a Just a View site that shows that on a really big arch window. And you just press the button and they'll, they'll time it to come right up. The motor, I will say, is on. We can now, though. Everything's always evolving and changing. So we, I just found out we can have them mount the motor in the back behind the shade to hide it if there's enough depth. But we need a depth in the window. Otherwise, the little motor sits out front. And I generally, you know, just like that corner board that you saw, it's nice to cover kind of that top, transition that window in the middle and have a valance or, or something to kind of cover that. So yeah, there's a question. Yeah, I actually have two questions. Mm -hmm. um, I have one of the 1950s style ramblers um, that are, you know, in Bloomington. Um, and so I went to go purchase blinds and there's like an inch of space at the top of my window um, where I would have to attach something into the window for a blind. Um, That depth, yeah, kind of that depth, depth of the window. It's like an inch at okay. the top. And then secondly, um, we've got one of those, like, I think they're called like bay windows. There's like five panes yep. around it. What type of solution would you have for something like that? Okay, a couple of those items. And first of all, I should say, so my passion in this, in doing all of this, is my favorite thing to do, and I do it free consultation. I'll come out to your house. I'll take a look at your windows, um, help you decide. I'll measure so that we're all responsible for everything. And then we have installers too, if you choose for us to install. So we take everything from A to Z in the window covering world. Um, so feel free to call me and I'll just, I can come out and you can go with me or not go with me, but I'll bring everything out. I love to, it's my favorite thing to do because I get to see your window. I get to see what window it is, northwest, south, east. I get to ask you, what do you want to do? Do you want to do light control? Do you want to do room darkening? Do you want just privacy? What is it that you want? And I can narrow down, and again, in your choice, in your case, those things that we can do. There are options, and an inch, if it is a truly an inch, we can do most of our products with the inch. It used to be, I had go down to a half inch, but now that all the head rails are kind of new and different, those brackets are a little bit stronger because all the products are a little bit more durable that you need that, you need the weight or you need the strength in the bracket. So we used to be able to do a half inch depth, but now it's about an inch. And so if it is truly an inch, you could do one of these. You could do the, the um, cell, the honeycomb shade in there that would fit in there. Um, it's nice because it's a pretty straight and it keeps that straight on the side so it will cover. But um, we can talk about that a little more if you want to stay or if you want to call me or email. Or another good thing is to send a picture. If you could get on your phone just a picture of the corner of your window or even the, the top of it and send it to me. I can usually tell or we can talk some more. Some of the other shade, you know, some of these with the... Uh, 
smaller head rail we can still do with an inch depth. So there are options out there that we can do. I don't know if you looked at anything, but um, let me know. And then other question, did, I'm sorry. Like the bay window. Oh, the bay window. Yeah. Now, does that have any, does it have any breaking points? And is there depth there? Um, is, well, there is depth, um, but it's like oak around it. So okay. It's really because sometimes we've been able to do in the separate five. Like yep, like a cell shade. And it typically gets down to if that narrowness again. I have done, but I haven't seen that in a while. The windows now for bays are pretty, uh, they don't have a lot of depth. But there has been bays in the past that I've been able to fit, like wood, sh wood blinds in there. But you need to have a little more, more depth in there on those. Those are a little tricky. Feel free to call me and have me come out. Or send a picture. Okay. That gives me, that helps. If you don't feel like, ah, I don't know if I want to have Linda come out and do all that, send a picture. Pictures written, everybody with a cell phone, it's so nice now. Just, you know, send me an email with a picture and I can kind of create some ideas from there. Okay. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about cleaning, sheer shades? Sure. Ex yep, yep. So the sheer shades, um, any of the shades, kind of the big feature on those is to vacuum them. If you have a soft brush on your attachment, that works nicely. If you have the sheer shades, I have people, to, I'm just going to be honest, differ in opinion with me. Some people say they get bugs and, and things in there. Um, with these, you could take, get a feather duster or one that is really kind of more narrow, and you can do it gently to get anything out of there. I have also taken a hair dryer on cool, you have to keep it on cool, and kind of blown it along to get it out of there. Um, some of the guys out there have taken lightly some aerosol air, and you can you know, get things out of there. Generally with a sheer shade, if you're moving it, it's not, all of these products are treated so that they kind of repel dust for a while. And so any, getting into any cleaning aspect, you're taking that off of there, but there is ultrasound, there are some blind places that clean. Um, one is Gopher State Venetian Blind, I've worked with them for 30 years. They're up in Fridley, she's awesome. Her name is Cher and she's awesome. So they will take some of these and they are able to clean, depending on the fabric, some of these, or any of the shades, except for the room darkening. If they have the foil, they can't do those. But they will ultrasonic clean them. I have um, any of the screen shade, and then most of the window coverings gather dust here. Just take your vacuum attachment and dust those off. That's where most of them gather dust. For the, for the screen shades, that's pretty easy. It's just the head rail that usually gets dirty or dusty. Any of them you can spot clean. Um, I did just tell, have a client that had a shade. I don't know that I would always tell everybody, but they had a shade that was fabric, a cell shade, and I've done it too. If it's a fabric that seems pretty durable, it's not too light, and it doesn't have too much mm, coating or anything that seems like, you know, anything would ruin it. I've actually taken the shade and um, put it in a bathtub of water. Or if you don't want to get the head rail, get it to this point wet. The trick is, I found, is that you need to let everything dry out. Some of these with the uh, cordless now are a little bit more tricky. I don't know that I would totally do it with that. Some of the cord operated ones though, if you, if you, if you did that, then just get it in a soapy suds bathtub of a very mild soap and let it, you know, soak, whatever, fill it back up with clean water, get it all cleaned off and then make sure it, it dries. So I kind of put it this way and I kind of put it this way make sure it all dries out and then stick it back in your window. See if you can get the head rails to dry out. Stick it back in your window and let it dry. So I have done that, if you so choose. That's kind of taking it into your own hands. 
this particular person decided to do that because it was such a dirty shade and was downstairs and they really didn't care. I mean, they were going to try it and why not? It's been years and if it didn't work, I would just replace it. And he actually came to me this week and said, it worked. It worked great. But there were some stains on it, he thinks, from his kids. So he chose to do that. Otherwise, um, Gopher State, Venetian Blind, they take any of these shades and I, they will do ultrasonic cleaning on them. So that works great too. But other, I would just try a mild, if you, do you have something that's stained or dirty well, or? Because <laughs> um, otherwise you can just try and take, if something got splashed on there, it's just mild soap and water and kind of dab it and clean it off. Any other questions? Gopher State Venetian Blind, or Gopher State Blinds, I think if you Google that. And she's up in, she's up in Fridley, and it's ultrasonic cleaning. Also, she's great for repairs. So if you've got an older blind, um, she's great. And if you call her, you can usually, because people say, oh, she's in Fridley. I've just, in a case scenario, had a client call her and said, you know, hey, if I make an appointment with you, and she's like, yeah, sure, you make an appointment for this day, I'll be here. And she went up there, and my client thought she'd go get a cup of coffee and come back, but she ended up just waiting for it, and she restrung it right there. So it works well. I know, I know, I know. It's nice to have her. It gets tricky nowadays. I used to be able to fix them on my own, but you kind of need the tools to do it because you've got all the little nooks and crannies and to get that cord to go through. So it's a little tricky. But Cher has a lot of parts too if there's older blinds and you need, oh darn, one of my brackets you know, broke. Um, some of these are, are tough because through the years their head rails have changed and I just had another client call and say, hey, we were painting and I lost one of my brackets. And so it took a little finding but we finally found one because all the head rails will change through the years and sometimes those parts become obsolete so it gets a little tricky but call me on those if you ever had anything on that I just had somebody lose there and I see I lost one just because again I'm throwing it in my car but one of the end caps and so they lost taking it down to paint a room they broke or lost one of the end caps and we were able to get that and I didn't even do the blinds originally but we were able to find it so give me a call if you need that too do my best. We used to have the shop on 34th and Cedar, so we had this whole room filled with different parts. It was kind of nice. I kind of missed that. Anything else? All right. Well, thanks, you guys. Thanks for coming out. Well, a nice job. Thank you very much. Thanks. If you have any other questions, um, you'll hang around for a little bit. Yes. I forgot to mention Absolutely. too, we have loan programs. If anyone has any rehab loan, um, would like to take out a loan to make any home improvements. The website up here I forgot to mention, um, if you put in bloomingtonmn.gov and uh, housing rehab, we have a great loan program for those of you that might want to finance home improvements. It's a deferred type loan, you don't make payments on it. It's a very, you, make, you pay it back when you sell. Very low interest um, and it only accrues interest for 10 years. It's a great way to finance improvements. There are income eligibility requirements, so you have to meet an income, be under that income limit, and then also uh, equity requirements apply, but all the information is on there. Or you can uh, contact the HRA. Question? Is there a location requirement on that? Yeah, with anywhere within the city of Bloomington. Anywhere yep, anywhere within the city. We do have another uh, curb appeal loan program. It's it concentrated in the northeast corner, okay. but uh, that's a separate program, but it's also on our website too. All right. Everyone, thank you for coming.